So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which we're going to see what automated deployment with Circle CI is and how it can make your life a hundred times easier as a developer. We would be seeing how we could use Circle CI to automatically test and deploy our codes on any of your machines, any of your servers by SSH into that machine and actually deploying it. Now, Starting off with automated deployment, what it is and how it works. Well, you see that there are a lot of stuff you do when you are done finishing your project. The first one being building your code. Now, building code means that you are running some sort of optimizers like Webpack and, you know, bringing all the assets together. You're bundling all the JavaScript, you're compressing all the CSS, you're optimizing all the images, all that stuff. So I'm going to count that in building code then you do test your code. That is, if you have written unit test, you're gonna run against them. If you have written snapshot UI test, for, for example, like for React, you are gonna run against that and so on. Then finally, when you're satisfied with this, you're gonna push it to the production. And then you're gonna repeat it. Whenever you make some change, whenever there's some sort of new requirement on the website, you're gonna repeat all these steps one more time, right? Now, building when you're building your code it's very time consuming if you have ever tried to run a you know a webpack optimizer on a heavy application on a regular laptop you're going to see that it takes quite a while for webpack to exit that is to completely build your project so building is of course very much time uh, consuming right building is slow right as i said it's not really good for your laptop to actually build production ready code. It's the job of some powerful computer. Now, building sometimes could lead to works on my machine problems in case you have a specialized biased environment towards the production. So that is also one of the problems. Similarly, with testing, you need to ship your code with confidence when you're shipping it on production. So testing helps for you helps you for that um, testing also allows you to catch nasty bugs earlier that might skip as um, to production if you are not careful for example if you're not testing your endpoint apis and you change something in the code it might ship to production just without you knowing if you don't have tests in place then again for pushing pad it's really tedious if you have a lot of developers or even not a lot of developers if you have even have a small team what happens is that if you're pushing constantly throughout the day you're gonna see that um, if you're doing all the previous steps manually it becomes a very cumbersome task to do right so we want to deploy building pushing and testing not in any specific order but you know you get the idea so you need to bind the builds and test together just like i said so what is the solution for this well at CodeDAM, I use Circle CI for this particular purpose. That is, Circle CI powers CodeDAM's automated deployments. And right now, I'm going to show you how CodeDAM works on that. Now, my primary reason for choosing Circle CI is because it's great, it's free, and for private repositories as well on GitHub, it's free. Some providers are not free for private repositories, but Circle CI is. And so if you have a private project, it's a great way to go forward. Not only this, with Circle CI, you can actually use Windows as the build environment on the platform. Now, if you're using some sort of technology which involves Windows build environment like .NET applications, then this is the way you could do it. So with Circle CI, the Windows configuration file pretty much remains the same, which we'll see in a minute how this works but we get all the windows tools like the shell and actually there's a complete list here so you get the dotnet framework you get all the shells you get visual studio 2019 community edition installed you get the windows 10 sdk and you know all sort of package managers node ruby go anything you like right so that is one way to go if you have a windows build requirement and yeah, now let's just see how we can dive deep into Circle CI by actually looking at some code. So let's see what I have in place for here. So if we go ahead, 
into the dot circle ci folder you're going to see immediately that we need a folder called dot circle ci in our github repository in order for circle ci to initiate and obviously you can find all the installation steps from circle ci but i'm assuming that you have a little bit of a project at least a little bit of project ready with you so starting off with here what we have is a config.yml file for circle ci now this is a yml file so all that yml syntax but i'm just gonna skip over to important parts in here first of all you're gonna see that circle ci runs your image and runs your code inside a docker image now the advantage of this is just like we talked about in the slide where we saw that um, there could be works on my machine errors right so this kind of thing avoids that because every time you're building your code and running your code in an isolated environment so that avoids that particular thing right then you're going to choose some working directory which is where your repository would be most probably would be cloned then what you need to do is you need to add some ssh keys but that what i mean is that you can go to your circleci.com so once you are here what you need to do is go to the settings of your circle ci repository and go all the way down to ssh permissions now you're going to see that i already have a ssh key added which has a fingerprint of this and you can see that it matches directly with this and you can see that i'm happy to have this information public because the reason is you only have the fingerprint of this particular ssh key the actual ssh key is stored with circle ci so what you have to do is just go ahead and add your domain.com and write your private key which your domain.com actually contains so once you're here if you go back to your server inside your .ssh folder you're going to see that you have some authorized keys that contains the public keys of um, the keys allowed to ssh on your system right so you need to authorize circle ci in order to deploy in order to build to be able to deploy using circle ci you need to authorize circle ci for using your ssh key right so you have to add the private counterpart of this particular authorized key to your circle ci dashboard once you do that you're going to get a fingerprint of that which you can use in your yml file just like we did right here so once that is clear we move out to checkout which basically pulls our git repository and you know just places it on the file system of circle ci right finally we come to this these run steps so you see that i have added a helper name to that and all these now depend on your actual thing what you want to do so eventually when i want to build it on when i want to do a production build of the setup what i want to do is uh, actually this blog is not really necessary for now we'll come to this later on right let's start from here so i changed my environment to development because i want to install the dependencies and everything right because i'm actually performing a complete build i do a npm continuous install not an install because um, npm continuous install uses package lock.json instead of package.json to actually install the correct versions whereas npm install might still override package lock in some cases right so because i want to tie my dependencies really tightly with my development environment i'm using npm ci then i install a concurrently module just for the sake of speeding up things even further because at codedam i use webpack both for client and server so why not just build them separately using concurrently right so that's for that then finally we could run some tests right so if this these tests pass then it's okay if it fails then the build does not proceed if the test pass we get to production then we create the production build so i add add in some production options here and i set the environment to production and then i run a custom written script which is in package.json again this depends on what you are doing if you're just using tools like create react app so you're just gonna say npm build right here instead of all that stuff but still i'm but because i'm going custom way so i have my own custom scripts then finally once you're ready we get to this deploy thing right and you can see that right here i have a deploy.sh file and uh, right here you could see in the setup thing i actually made this deploy.sh file executable right so that's that now 
what about this thing? Well, you see this variable right here holds the IP address to the actual machine where we want to SSH. And the thing is, if you have ever SSH into a machine, you would have seen that we get something like this at the very first SSH attempt, right? Now, if you are in a CI CD environment that is inside circle CS Docker container, you don't want that container to be stuck here, right? So what we do is we manually add that yes, this key is correct, this IP address is correct, and we know this particular host in order to avoid this message and getting stuck here forever, right? So this is what this does. So once we are done with this, I run a custom bash script. Now, once you have access to bash, you can pretty much do anything, right? So inside a deploy.sh at code dam, at least what I'm doing is First of all, I'm removing git and git ignore and everything like that because I want I want to actually push the files not really by just uploading them but actually pushing to a git directory. So what I have at codedam is I can show you what we have in here is that if I go to the codedam folder, I'm going to show you that we have a dot git folder right here which actually is kind of on the receiving end right so what we are doing is this is the client this is the git client right and then this is the production server of code damp a git repository and how do we push it using ssh right so we add the production server using ssh and we push it to master now this design could obviously be improved upon but for now it works great right and if you are just starting off with bare metals from the very down i think it's it's a decent approach to take at the first go all right so once we have pushed our thing to production we finally want to do some cleanup as well so we just ssh into the instance we navigate to our folder we perform any npm install now remember at this particular point at this particular point, we have updated files inside server, we have updated files inside client folder, everything is updated. We just need to kind of, you know, restart the server. We perform an npm install for the server part because node modules does not get bundled for the server. So for that, we just do that. And finally, we just perform a pm2 restart of codedam.com, which is the process manager for codedam. And finally, we just exit. So yep that is how a typical build would look like and for to configure a remote server to be a receiving git repository what you have to do is just pretty much go into your git folder and let's see just just go into your config and just append this thing deny current branch and update in instead right just do that also, what you could do is just go into your hooks and just update the push to checkout hook and set this particular hook to this value. So this just resets the head of your Git repository to um, their latest commit because you don't want Git to have merge conflicts and everything like that on production, right? So we just want, we're just using Git to upload the files instead of like manually managing and using all that uploading ourselves right so yeah essentially that is how you're gonna build a simple but effective deployment system using circle ci and git so that's all for this video if you liked it don't forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe the channel and uh, yeah just share the word it really helps thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next video.